Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In today's video, we're gonna continue working in the Python language. We're gonna continue working with our turtle programming, but we're gonna take things a little bit differently. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna talk about in this video and in the upcoming videos are how to create functions. Now, functions are little segments of code that get run every time we give it a keyword. So we're gonna to have to have some type of identifier that goes with the function. And this identifier is going to list all of the steps that should be done every time we mention this magical keyword. So we're gonna to go to our Sculpt website. Um, so www.sculpt.org. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of the code that we currently have here. And we're going to put in our name and a comment. We're going to import uh, the turtle library. And we're going to create a turtle object. So T gets turtle dot turtle. And then we are going to define what it means to be a square. Now notice that I use the word def. Def is how I define things. And square changed color. It's not the normal red that reserved words in Python have. It's not the blue that identifiers have. It's now this green color. And this green color means that we are defining what square means. I'm gonna have parentheses here and I'll explain why in a little bit later, but I'm gonna have this colon as well. And we've talked about this colon before. We've seen this colon with our for loops and these, this colon actually helps us to denote scope. In other words, once I hit enter, notice that Oops, excuse me, let me hit that colon. Once I hit enter, everything's gonna be tabbed over four spaces. And when we dealt with loops, we said that everything that was tabbed over four spaces was part of the code that was gonna be repeated. For us, for this definition of square, everything that's got the four spaces in front of it is gonna be part of our definition. So what makes a square? Well, a square has four sides and a square has four right angles. So I need to make sure I take care of both of these. I need to do this with some type of loop because I'm gonna repeat something four times. So we're gonna do a for loop, so for index in range of uh, four in this case. And because it's a loop, notice that I'm now tapped over four units away from where I was. I've got the four units here for the loop, but I've also got the four units for square. Now, because of these first four units, this loop and everything inside of it are going to be inside the square definition. But these four units that I've got here are going to be everything that we have for our loop. So I need to make sure that I draw a side. So let's go ahead and do t dot forward, and we'll make this forward uh, 50 pixels, and then t dot right, and I want to turn right 90 degrees. And so that's my definition of a square. A square is supposed to have four sides and it's supposed to also have four right angles. So now what I can do is I can type square. Here's our magic word. And now when I run this code, I'm gonna see a square magically drawn. Now I do this every time that I type square. So if I was to go over here and say uh, t.setPosition100100 uh, 100, 100, and then do square, or if I was to do t dot color to, oh, let's make a nice uh, fuchsia. So F F O O F F and then square. What it's going to do is it's going to do the square. It's gonna move position. It's gonna do another square at that position. It's gonna change color and it's gonna make a square that color. So here's our first square. Then it's gonna change its position. There's its second square, probably should have lifted the pin. And there's the fuchsia square. So, I've got this method, this function called square. And every time I call upon it, it's going to draw a square. Now, all of these squares are the same size. It's kind of boring. So I wanna talk about how I can deal with that. And one of the things I can do is inside this parentheses, it allows me to place parameters. So what I can do is I can have a parameter called length, and I can let this parameter here decide how long each side's going to be. Instead of being locked into a length of 50, I could lock into, well, whatever length I'm given. So what I could do is I could make my first square have a size of 75. I could have my second square be a real tiny square of 20 pixels in length. And I could have my magenta square be a larger square with a size of 100. If I do that, here's my 75 pixel square. 
then I move to the position, there's my little tiny 20 pixel square, and then here's my huge 100 pixel square here. So the idea of using a parameter allows us to make our shape variable because we're essentially introducing a variable that we can use, a variable that can be specified whenever our magic word is summoned. So whenever we say square and some number in parentheses, it's going to do that magic side. So what I want to do is I want to do one more function. This function's nice and all, it'll do squares, but in geometry we have all different types of shapes. So what I want to do is I actually want to define something else. I want to define polygon. Now when I look at a polygon, a polygon usually has some number of sides. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about what happens based on the number of sides. So I'm going to have num sides sides. And when we did this on day four of unit four, we also talked about how we could have the length of the side equal to 400 divided by the num sides. Because as the number of sides gets bigger, we want our shape to be smaller. And then the other thing we could do is we could say that the uh, angle, remember this is really an exterior angle because this is what we're actually turning our turtle. We get that exterior angle by taking 360 and dividing by the number of sides. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we write the code to do this. We need to make sure that we have this number of sides, which means instead of having a loop that only goes up to four, our loop should go up to num sides. So we're going to do four index in range of num sides, colon, and that gives us a scope. So now everything in this four tabbed area here is going to be part of our repeated code. We're going to tell our turtle to go forward, and this is going to be 400 divided by num sides. And then we're going to tell our turtle to turn a certain amount. So we're going to do t dot left just to be different. And the angle is going to be 360 degrees divided by num sides. Both of these statements are indented, so they're both part of this repetition, but everything here is indented four spaces already, even the for loop. So all of this is part of the definition of polygon. So what I can do is I can take this code out here at the bottom and say polygon 6, and what that will do is that will give me a hexagon down here. And so I can give it different types of polygons. I can change the color in between. I can say t dot color uh, blue, and then do polygon 15. And what that'll do is that'll give me a black hexagon, and then it'll give me a blue 15 again. And one of the things that we remarked upon last time was that when we're doing these shapes, the more sides I have, the more circle-like it has. So I'm interested, if I was to do t.color red, and then to do polygon of 360, what would happen here? Well, if 360 is our num sides, then we're going to do 360 sides. That's a lot of sides we're going to be going forward 400 divided by 360 and the way that Python does this, an integer divided by an integer gives us an integer. 360 goes into 400 one time, which means we're only going to be advancing one pixel each time we go through the loop. And 360 divided by 360 is 1, so we're going to be turning left 1 degree. So we're going to be moving forward one pixel and turning left 1 degree. This is interesting. Here's our hexagon. Here's our 15 again, and then here is our 360 sided polygon. Notice that it looks very much like a circle. So we've got a way to draw all these different types of polygons. We can specify the color, we can also change position like we did before using the set position to make these polygons all over. We still have the ability to have our turtle pick its pen up and put its pen down, but this just basically gives us another way of doing a shortcut of code. Every time it sees polygon, it's going to do something. And it's going to do something with this parameter, the 6 or this 15 or this 360, just like t.color does something with red, or t.color does something with blue, or t.setPosition does something with the two numbers we give it. 
These parameters are essential in Python and in most computer languages because they allow us the versatility to make the code do things in a slightly different manner. Notice that all of these are printing polygons, but how they do it, the angles that we turn, the number of sides that we see, the distance that we travel, are different based on this parameter here. So this 6, this 15, this 360. We're going to continue talking about functions in this unit. Uh, we're going to be talking about how functions can even call other functions and how we can get some really neat tricks out of using these functions because they allow us to repeat code without having to retype code. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.